I've got everything where it needs to be. So you can them. Yeah, we'll figure it out as we go. But I mean, honestly, I really don't have to go far. I can just pretty much say, this is my this is my rig. Mm -hmm. This is pieces and parts. And let me tell you what I put on here and why I put on here. And I'm gonna start with front tire and go from there. Hey Steve, what time is it? It's not tat time. It's it's actually beer o'clock. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Landshark. <laughs> not that we condone drinking and driving, but we do certainly condone drinking and videoing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Moto Photo Adventures, everybody. This is Chris. This is Steve. We are here at his beautiful home on the lake, ready to show you guys what kind of a cool bike he has. So for those of you that don't know and haven't been following the channel very long, I would highly recommend that you hit the like and subscribe button so that you can follow us. But what I have here is a Honda Africa Twin. It's a 2018 DCT. That would be the dual automatic clutch. Uh, dual clutch technology, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the layman's term is called automatic. <laughs> <laughs> I had never had one. Um, I decided I would get one and try it. If I didn't like it, I would go back to manual. But um, I can tell you now that I've had it, for those of you that are on the fence, DCT, not DCT, it's a, it's a pleasure. You do have the ability to shift it into a manual and then use the toggle switches on your, to upshift, downshift. So it's, you don't give up complete manual or go 100% automatic, but it is, so, it's the best of both worlds. It really is. So my wife says I'm a control freak, which is why I shoot all my cameras in manual. Well, I, But I could still control the bike if I wanted to. Very much so. To me, it was just, it was try something new. Um, step outside your comfort zone. I read a bunch of reviews. I'm sure everybody that's going through this has. And 99% um, of the people that go this route stay this route. Um, you know, yes, if I was hardcore off-road, I would love to have the clutch where I could you know, slip it and do some popping. And But, you know, at this point in my career and my life, <laughs> I'm looking for the easy road now. <laughs> but anyway, it's been, a, it's been a great bike. It really has. Um, I started off, um, before I even took delivery of the bike, I had them install the heated grips. I had them put a, a TKC80 up front. Um, I did not change the back tire originally. I took the stock Dunlap tire and ran it down. Just, I figured before I started going off road, I just kind of get the feel of what it was quote unquote supposed to be. A buddy of mine told me that the TKC 80 probably by far is the best tire for the front of this bike. Um, I'm on my third one. I've got 16,000 miles on the bike now. It has not disappointed me at all. Um, I would highly recommend going that route. The moving. What do you have on the back now? Right now on the back, I have the Moto Z Motaz Z GPS. Tractionator GPS. Tractionator GPS. And I have been very, very happy with that. It's got a little center strip down the middle, so you don't get that whoa, whoa, whoa when you're driving on the highway. Um, but yet I still have plenty of traction off road. Um, mm -hmm. We just got through doing a section of the scar, which was like swimming in sand. And um, I, it I noticed really... there's not a whole lot of sand on Max. What happened? Max never took a nap. Is that because of the DCT? You could just <laughs> right on out of it? Well, come on, Chris, give me a little credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a big bike. Um, I will tell you that it is a, it, it's a very tall bike. I'm six foot five, but it works very well for me. In fact, it's not even tall enough for me to the point where um, I put this crazy kneeling mat plus a sheepskin on there to give me a little more height and a little more comfort. And this was a $20 fix for a $200 fancy seat combination. And honestly, rock straps hold it on and it has been perfect. In fact, so much so I can't see spending the extra money to buy a high dollar um, seat. Custom seat. Um, so that it really truly has, this is probably the cheapest upgrade you can do to an Africa Twin to get the comfort if you don't mind giving up about an inch of, of, of leg height. I took a lap around uh, the neighborhood on Steve's bike and he's right, it's a tall bike. I'm five foot seven. Uh, it was fine, I could still tippy toe, but when I got back, what did I say? It's like a big dirt bike. 
lots of suspension and uh, I took it off road on a couple little sections around the neighborhood. Beautiful rides, fantastic. It's a really neat bike, but it feels like a big dirt bike. My big wish was that it was probably about 150 pounds lighter, <laughs> but you know, I Isn't think- Isn't that the wish of all adventure bike riders? That's all adventure bike riders want their bike to be lighter. Um, you know, I carry probably way too much gear, but then again, I'm, I'm old school where um, better to have it than wish you had it. Um, you know, I've got a kitchen sink in here somewhere, I think, but- Now, um, now you, you brought up gear. So let, let's talk about gear, because you've had a whole bunch of different iterations on this bike. I've gone through a bunch of, of different bag configurations. I started off with a Moscomoto set. I love them. They were great. Um, they did what I needed them to do. I knew that by doing the Transamerica Trail, if you haven't seen that series, go to this link. <laughs> um, I knew I was not going to do the Transamerica Trail with a set of hard panniers. There was just no way. Um, too many horror stories about broken legs. And honestly, I really like the soft bag concept. Um, I do have a top box, a GV top box that I can slide on here if I need to lock something up. Um, in fact, when I did Sturgis, I went out there with, <laughs> spoiled rotten brat here, um, my Harley and my Africa Twin. And now, it was- Of those two bikes, which ones did you quit? keep? Well, well, it's so funny that you should say that. Um, I ended up selling the Harley because I, I put more miles on this bike in a year and a half than I put on in four years of owning my Harley. So yeah, there's some people who say, well, keep both. But you know, honestly, it, this bike right here, so better suspension, quieter ride, better technology, DCT automatic, when well, my wife, we double up quite a bit. I'm one of the fortunate guys that my wife l likes to ride with me. And um, so it's it's really been a good run. But as far as farkles and baggage and whatnot. Go back to your uh, your gear now. So you, you used the uh, Moscow Moto for a little bit. You also have hard bags from Touratech, which Mark has uh, helped us with. But right now you're walking, rocking these uh, Nelson Rig Hurricane bags. Nelson Rig um, was gracious enough to, to allow us to have a set to try out, all three of us. Um, I really like their clips. The way this thing clips on this bike, it's so versatile. And, and having watched the other guys in the group adapt theirs to their bike, it, th this new clip system is amazing. Um, bang for the buck, the, the, the look of the welds and the, the seams, I think these bags, ba literally bang for the buck are probably, you can't go wrong with them. So mm -hmm. a shout out to Nelson Rig for helping us out. I had the, an original tank bag. Um, it was larger. I do like that aspect of it, but this one right here shapes better for the bike. And I just give up a little bit of room it's not completely waterproof, but there's room on top to um, to put the, the rain cover. Mm -hmm. And this is the older Rig Gear series. They do have a waterproof Hurricane version of this. And that's what Jason has on his bike. And that is one thing that I love about the new Hurricane system is it's completely waterproof without having to get any kind of a, a cover out. But so this is the 30 liter, and then you've got the two saddlebags. Two saddlebags, and then I've also got the little bags that will sit up on top. Little 10 liters. And the 10 liters, I actually have one of those inside here that carries my inner tubes and um, recovery gear. So if I have a flat tire, um, I've got that ability to, to pull that off of this, stick in here, take these off if I want to do um, a lighter weight, less, less cumbersome um, setup. setup. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I like that they also have the uh, they pockets do. built in for your beer in this case, but for water for and, water and, and fuel. also the fuel. Yep. Um, speaking of fuel, for me, I did add a one gallon Rota packs up underneath the Outback Motortech um, pannier racks. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, those racks are phenomenal. Um, I have been very pleased with these. They're very versatile. Um, with the Moscow Moto quick release, I can actually slide my um, hard bags on, pull them off um, just that fast. Um, so I also have the Outback Motortech lower and upper crash bars. Um, I did opt for a different bash plate because I went with the Bumat simply because it covered the stator cover better than what they had. I'm not saying that theirs won't do as good a job. I just saw enough reviews 
that I just wanted to go ahead and, and, and they fit perfectly with the Outback stuff. And Mark Carrera is a great guy. If you've never looked into their stuff, I promise you, if you go to their website and look at how they show you how good their, their crash bars are, they literally take the bike, push it and drop it across concrete gravel. And I'll be honest with you, that's what sold me on the Outback stuff. Yeah. And it's stout. Now you've also done a little bit of modification here in the cockpit. What, what's going on here? So I took the stock mirrors off, mainly because they were very rigid. And as y'all all know, ADV riders, it's not a matter of if you're gonna drop your bike, it's when you're gonna drop it. So I went with the double take, super cool. They bend, they move, um, but yet they stay in place when you need them to stay in place. So I also added a little triple, um, ram ball mount so that i could have a place to mount my gopro for different angles mm -hmm. um super easy and i'll be honest with you the main reason i added it on this side was because with my broad shoulders this mirror i couldn't see behind me <laughs> so this one sticks out a little bit further than this one just simply because of the blinker and and uh, the the way the the horn and stuff is mounted so mm -hmm. that was a win for me um, I also added the ADV camel um, GPS mount to give the, um, the front um, windshield mount uh, a stronger attachment point and a great place to mount the GPS. You've got a phone mount for your phone, but you all do, do have a, a Zumo Garmin Zumo. I got my Zumo GPS. Um, on there. So I went with a Ciro phone mount. It's got a nice clamp. Um, I have to thank Adam Sandoval for for showing it and recommending it because it is fantastic because even with my life proof case on my iPhone, I don't have to plug anything in. It charges the phone. It's fantastic. And with the clamp on it, it it's not going to fall out. I promise you. I mean, even when you unclamp it, it still will stay there. But when you clamp it down, it goes nowhere. Um, also added a GoPro. Um, mount over here on top of my brake reservoir. Mm -hmm. um, of course that comes off and I've got a ton of ball mounts. Ram, ram ball mounts, we all use the ram ball mounts for our And, uh, and oddly, these arms right here say C and C on them. These are, this is part of my underwater photography rig. Um, I love them because they're all ABS plastic <laughs> and they're not gonna rust. <laughs> but they're great because at Modular, I've got a ton of mounts on this cam on this motorcycle. I'm sure you guys have seen all of our videos, all the different action uh, mounts, locations that we have for our GoPros. Yeah. So that, that, the ram mount, the, um, the, the plate on the back to hold my hard case. I did add the Honda center stand. Um, I believe Outback Motor Tech um, has one as well. They were out of stock at the time. We were getting ready to go on a trip. Um, knowing that these tires with tubes are prone to flats, I wanted to have a center stand to make life ch easier for me to change a tire. And that was probably a helpful thing when we were was, crossing the Continental Divide and you had to change your tire out there. <laughs> we had a flat tire. It was crazy. I was the only one on the whole trip that had a flat tire. We'll, we'll link to the episode. That was pretty funny. It was pretty cool. And the, fact, and the thing that's cool, other than having a flat tire, the fact that two guys pulled up on Africa Twins and said, hey, I want to watch because we've never changed our tires. <laughs> it was hilarious. So you and gave then a lesson right there. In we the gave a lesson on the side of the road. And then eight hours later, we ran into them at another town. It was hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I did put rock risers on here. I, being a tall guy, when I stand up, I just didn't want to lean over. So that to me was a no brainer. Um, that had to be done. Um, I also put the Hepco Becker um, um, Bark Buster type, quote unquote, type stuff. Um, the reason I went with theirs is they fit and they're molded around the stock um, wind deflectors or bark busters, which everybody says will break the first time you drop your bike. But um, with these, they're solid metal. They're not aluminum. You bend them, you push them back, you're good to go. Um, that was a win for me as well. I did add a set of rigid dually D2s up front for um, additional lighting. Um, I keep amber covers on them. And if we're riding at night, I'll pull the amber covers off. And um, I literally call them retina burners. They are 
They're very bright. If you're Stupid riding in front of bright. Steve, you know when Steve's behind you. <laughs> but you know, it's it's like anything. You know, the stock Be better to be seen than to be at a. <laughs> I want to be seen. I want to be able to see at night. Um, the stock headlights are adequate. But these just bring it to a whole other level, and I would highly recommend an uh, an alternate set. Uh, and honestly, they're so easy to plug in. I just got a um, cheap little light switch um, off of eBay, clamps to the handlebars, and, and they're good to go. The downside is I wired those lights so that when you turn the key off, they still stay on. <laughs> and I can tell you from experience. Hey, Steve, I got a question for you. Yeah. Can you push start a DCT? You cannot push start a DCT. <laughs> so, so because of that, and we found out the hard way, um, I added a little pigtail down here. This little pigtail right here that I use my NOCO G GB40 booster. You plug it in, you turn it on, you wait a couple seconds, and even with a dead battery, the thing cranks right up. And unless... And we'll link to that episode. <laughs> um, you didn't tighten the uh, the ground strap down very well. <laughs> yeah, that has since but been that, resolved. That's an installation error. It's nothing against the NOCO. No, that was me. And, that was... And, and you get to use your NOCO as a USB charger, correct? This thing is multifaceted. Not only does it give you 12 volts out to jump start, it also you have a USB out. You also have um, flashlight. Uh, a flashlight. You get an emergency strobe if you're on the side of the road somewhere. It's, I mean, it's really cool. It tells you how much power you've got left. If you don't have one of these in your kit, I highly recommend it, especially with a DCT. Um, or you could just have a bike you can push start on a hill. You know, same thing. <laughs> yeah, but then again, when you get in the sand, you'll be wishing you had that automatic transmission. And that's a story for another day. Um, all in all, super thrilled with this bike. 16,000 miles in less than two years. Um, it's been fantastic. The only thing I've had to do is change the oil in it and change the rear brake. And that's it. It's been a fantastic bike. Do um, you use your brakes? Um, yes, for power slide. No. Just, <laughs> <laughs> no, going down the hills in uh, Colorado, down to some of the mountain passes, yes, I definitely use brakes. the brakes. Um, <laughs> not the front, because as y'all know, in loose terrain, your front brake is the death machine. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's it's been an awesome bike. I did a lot of research. I used to have a XR650L. I thought it was heavy. Ha. Um, this one's even heavier, but this one has so many more creature comforts. And on the highway, there were times when these guys were like, slow down, man, you're leaving us. We had a headwind one day and I was just cruising along and I looked at my rear view mirror and they were way back there. <laughs> <laughs> had, not, had nothing to do with speed limits or anything. No, like no, that. no, it had nothing to do with speed limits because, you know, <laughs> that's against the law. <laughs> so all the sparkles and stuff you've got on this thing you said it's a lot better than your xr650 does it have cruise control it does not oh well, we have a special gift for you awesome our friends at atlas throttle lock have sent you one of their uh, uh a cruise control <laughs> y'all this is gonna make my life so much better because i can't <laughs> tell you how many times i have uh, wished I've been, I've done the finger thing. I did add some, um, some foot pegs up here for, um, wh when I go into Highway what I call, I, I call it recliner mode. <laughs> um, these guys hate me for it because they're like, man, my back can't take that. And well, it just, sometimes it's just nice to shift positions to get the pressure point somewhere else. And, um, now imagine you're in your cruise control with your bike up on the highway pegs. Uh, now you can let your hand oh, off. Oh, this is going to be awesome. I can't <laughs> wait. Hey guys at Atlas, thank you so much. Um, for those of you, that don't know about atlas click on this link and um go check them out and above all else don't click on it order one because from what i understand these things are the bomb.com well steve thank you so much for your tour <laughs> <laughs> it's been awesome this has been an extended orange shirt review we appreciate you guys watching if you have any questions or comments about the african please trend, leave them i'll be glad to respond to them um i appreciate them and um I just send them send them our way. We really appreciate it.